Okay. We're starting the Gemara on Samach Beis or Aleph. Tanan Hosom. Okay, we're starting the Gemara on Samach Beis again. We learned the Mishnah in Trumas. Ain't Tormin min atoda shalom l'chuber. When you tie the truma, you cannot tie from what was cut from what's still growing, what's attached to the ground. Vim Torah mein truma so truma. And if you did tithe from the tolush, from what was cut, from what was attached, which was still growing, the truma is not a valid tithing. So what is the truma? The truma is tevel. Right? What was meant to be truma remains tevel. And what's, it, what's growing is nothing. No, if you took, took from itself. Let's say a person harvests uh, 10 pounds of, of wheat. And he, it's fully processed. So it's bona fide tevil. Now I take that tevil and I want to make a truma for, for, let's say, for 20 tons of grain that's still on the field, still growing. 20 tons of grain. Right? 10 pounds. So normally, if the grain on the field would be cut, the 10 pounds of, of grain, of cut, would, would be truma. But I'm trying to tithe the 20 tons that are on the field that haven't yet cut. So the, the act and the statement mean nothing. So what, what are you, at the end of the day, what are you left with? The 10 pounds retain the table status. Now if I would say, I'm taking part of the 10 pounds, let's say 20% or whatever it is, 40%, 50%, and I'm tithing it, or one-fifth, whatever, on itself, so what I set aside is chuma, and the remainder is chulin. Right? That's a valid tithing. Okay? So yesterday we were left off with Rashi's explanation of Tosa's question on Rashi. Rashi says, why are you not able to tithe from what's cut from what's still growing in the field? So Rashi says, his words are, because the Torah says, Rash is the gondcho. It's the first of your grain. Grain is only something that's been cut. Right? Something was harvested. Midi the midgan, and he says something which was midgan, it was processed, shenesafakri, that was gathered into the, to the silo. That's, where, that's midgan. Therefore, here, because it's, not, it's prior to that, it's not, the act is not valid. That's Rashi. So, let's take a look at Tosis. Tosis asks two questions on Rashi. Bishmakunjis. What qualifies as what you take and what you're taking on, on what you're taking? It's something which is midgan. What's dogan is grain. It has to already assume the uh, classification of grain. So what are you doing? So what's growing in the field, the Torah says, you're not obligated to tithe. And what's cut, what you have, the harvested grain that you have already, that you have to tithe. So if you take from something that has to be tithed and something which does not be tithed, tithe, totally ineffective. So you've accomplished nothing. That's Tosis, uh, and that's seemingly what Rashi says. Bekoshe. So Tosis says it's difficult. In Cain, Lidvor, Vitolush, Nami, Kodim, Shnis, Mareach. Even if you, you harvest grain before it's been winnowed, winnowing is part of the pro uh, processing the grain to be considered processed. So prior to winnowing the grain, the grain is still in its sheaves. You haven't threshed it, and you haven't winnowed it. Winnowing, you separate the, the chaff from the, from, the, from the kernel. So it's, it's not, hasn't been processed. Dim came, l'dvar, v'tolush, gami, kodim, lohavi, truma. Sharavei, lomitgan. It shouldn't be effective. It shouldn't be, be considered an effective tithing. Of course, it's not grain. Midgan means something which has been processed. No, no. That's the words. The words of the Gemara is midgan. Midgan. It's processed. Processed as the grain is meant to be processed. That's midgan. Of course, that's dogon. No, that's what Rashi says. He says. He's asking. So according to Rashi, even if it's been cut, what are we talking about? Something that's been harvested, something that's still growing. Even something that's been cut already, if it hasn't been processed, that it shouldn't have any relevance to truma. Because mm -hmm. the Torah uses the term dogon. Dogon means processed grain. Valesa, and this is incorrect. Tosa says it's, it, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Lesser. Do Omar Balmo, Sites Gemara and Ervin, 
Masa Rishon Shigdim Bishibolim Potur Mitruma Gedola. The Mashim Nahani. Now it's interesting. We had this Gemara I mentioned yesterday in Beya and in Shabbos and in Ervin. The two the two Psukim. What's the halacha? The person has fully processed grain. Tevel hasn't tithed anything, and he takes. Now what is the order of tithing? First you take Truma, goes to the Kohen. Then you take Maser, 10%, that goes to the Levi. Now the Levi then takes 10% of what he receives, give it, gives it to the Kohen. Now the Yisrael, what does he do afterwards? Now it depends on the sabbatical year, he has to take another 10%. If it's the first two years of the sabbatical year, the second tithing is, is classified as Maser Shani. You take that 10%, it can only be the Yushalayim. If it's the third year of the sabbatical cycle, that's called Maisa Oni. It has no Kedusha whatsoever, but it has to be distributed to the poor. Right? That's the halacha. Good. Now, the Gemara cites two psuk. What happens if a person, rather than do, taking first the Truma to give to the Kohen, takes the Maser? Takes the Maser. Wait, 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 wait. It's a valid tithing, but now the Levi, when he receives his Maser, there's a percentage of Truma in that Maser. Correct? Because the truma hasn't yet been tithed. No, no, but the levy, the levy normally has to take ten percent of what he has to take. So, but, but within that, truma hasn't been yet taken from the whole from the whole harvest. So the kohen has more than ten percent. Normally, the truma is given first. Okay, now the levy gets his maser. Now, he, after getting, he, he's, uh, he takes ten percent. So the kohen already has his truma. In addition to Truma, now he's taken another 10% of what he receives. But if the one who tithed originally the grain didn't take that first Truma, so contained in all the wheat is what? Is the Truma, which hasn't yet been taken. So the coin has more than a 10% interest in the levy. He has a partial Truma interest in, in the levy's portion and in everything. So the, the halacha is you have to take more than, in the first he takes the money, he has to give more than the Maser. He has to give the coin what hasn't yet been taken. So the Gemara, but the Gemara cites two pesukim. One pesuk indicates he has to give more than ten percent, and the other pesuk says he doesn't have to give more than ten percent. So the Gemara has it reconcile both pesukim. So the Gemara answers: Gemara Beya, Gemara Ervin, Gemara Shabbos. The Gemara says, if the grain was fully processed, it's called dogon. So dogon, the Torah says you have to take truma, maser. You have an obligation to tithe it. So if that's the case, the Kohen already had a claim of truma within that harvest. What about if the grain hadn't yet been processed? On a Torah level, you're even permitted to eat that. You're permitted to eat without tithing. It's not yet tevil. Except the post, I have a post that tells me, even though you have no obligation, if you do tithe, the tithing is effective. So in that case, if you took the Maser before the Truma, or you didn't take Truma whatsoever, you don't have to compensate the Kohen for the Truma, because there was never an obligation on that grain for Truma to be tithed. The only time the Kohen has a financial claim in the harvest is only if it was pr fully processed. Because fully processed grain, one must tithe truma. But before it's processed, you have no obligation to tithe anything. The Torah says if you tithe it, the tithing is valid. It's a valid tithing. So he took truma before the Masi did the wrong thing. But factually, did the coin ever have a claim have a claim to the grain? He never had a claim to the grain. Therefore you don't have to compensate the coin. Only if it wasn't processed. Wait. It's within everything. It's within everything. Now the Torah says take 10% of what's left. Takes 10% of his and gives to the Kohen. Not to my son. He took Masa first. But it's not only the labor. We're not only penalizing them. Everybody has to give peace. You have to set aside something for truth for the Kohen. You haven't given Truma yet. No, the coin doesn't get 10%. The coin doesn't get 10%. Truma, you can take on the Torah level, one kernel is sufficient. You're right, but he, but he has to take that one kernel. He has to take something. He has a claim within everything. Why, not only with Israel, not only with everything. If everything was part of the whole, 
So e he has a claim to every aspect of, of the grain that originally was obligated to be tithed. So now the levy, now the levy is separate. The levy is separate. The levy has to take, let's say I have a ton of grain, divided in half, and I take truma from, from, let's say, half of it, from the half a ton. And I don't have a mind to affect the other half a ton. Each, each uh, amount has to be tithed individually. Even though you take truma from A, it doesn't absolve the B. B still, you still have to take truma from B. Put it this, the late, no, I'm, I'm asking you. The levy is the late, wait, wait, wait. The levy's tr uh, nicer. Was Truma ever originally taken from that? The answer is no. So now you have an obligation to take Truma. The Israelis say, now you're, eight, wait, wait, wait. The, you say to Israel, you have, eight, you have, nine, you have 90 percent left. Was Truma taken from this? The answer is no. So now you have to take Truma. Doesn't it? No, so the levy, but it, we'll go to on a Torah level, one grain. One kernel is sufficient. Let's talk on a Torah level. One kernel is sufficient. So the Levi will give an additional kernel, and the Israel will give an additional kernel. No, 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 no. Truma is never ten percent. The rabbinical percentages you have to give. Let, let's talk on a Torah level, not to make it complicated. So the Levi would have to take a kernel, but let's say the wheat wasn't processed, the grain wasn't processed, and the Israel went out of order. He took first the maser. So this grain, was there ever an obligation to tithe it? They no. In that case, there's no obligation to be chuma. No, you have no obligation. But he did, but he did miser. He took miser. So once he takes miser, the Torah says miser is effective. So he gives the miser. What do you do with miser? Give it to the levy. The Torah says if a levy has miser, what do you have to do? You have to give 10% of what you have to the, to the coin. Right? Because that's miser already. Did you have an, ever have an obligation to, to, to make, to turn it into Maser? The answer is no. But once it is Maser, Maser, 10% has to be given to the Kohen. Okay? So that's what he's asking. The obligation of, of Tevil, the status Tevil is only if it's Dogon. Yet, if you tithe it before it becomes Dogon, it's effective. So you see that the laws of tithing are not dependent on the classification of Dogon. That's Tosa's question on Rashi. Okay? So he's quoting the Gemara in Ervin. Maserishin, which he had taken earlier when it was still in the sheaves. Sheaves is, is prior to being processed. Potimitruma. You have no obligation to give truma. Why? Because since the truma is only if it's already dogon. And since in shibolim, when it's still in the sheaves, it's not classified as dogon, there was never an obligation to give truma. The mashim nahani. The mashim is valid. Valid. It's, it's, based, it's all based on psukim. It's no, based no, but the truth is, even if you take truma over there, it says it would be truma. It's only he preempted, he went out of order. But let's say he didn't go out of order. Let's say he did take truma. The truma is truma. Okay? V'od kosher lahi de'omer ha-torah midover shenigba melachto d'ayno achem yiruach. A person tied to something that was fully processed, something which was not fully processed. So we have something that's classification as Dogon on something which hasn't yet been processed to be classified as Dogon. It's valid. So you see Rashi, see it's, it's not dependent on Dogon. Rashi says, why if you tie from something that's harvested and something which is still growing, why is that valid? Because what's growing is not classified as Dogon. Tosis is asking, he just cited two sources that to be an effective tithing, even if it hasn't yet been processed to the point to be classified as Dogon, it's considered a valid tithing. So why can't you tithe from something that's harvested on something that's still growing? That's Tosa's question. Yes. That's, that's the case of Shivoli. You tithe from the sheaves. So now we have a good question. So why when you tithe from something that's been cut on something that's still growing, why if it's growing, factually it's, it's grain. It's, it's called grain is growing. So we, it's not dogon, but we just proved it does not be dogon to, to, be, to be effective when you tithe. To cut sheaves. But to cut sheaves are not dogon. Not growing. But so we want to, where does it say anywhere? Wait, 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 wait. Right, right, right. So the question is, 
where do we see if something's still growing? Let's say it's 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 grown to its full to its full uh, maturity level, just hasn't yet been cut. So you'd say, what's growing in the field? Wheat. Where does it say? What is the basis to say that if I tithe on something that's growing, that it's not an effective tithing? What is the basis for that? We, we, we're just asking for a source. Tosis is Rashi source is incorrect because we sh we see that even something hasn't yet been processed to its fullest and it's not yet dogon, it's considered valid. I understand that. No, there is a difference. There is, the, but what is, the, what is, why should it make a difference? Where does the Torah say, if something hasn't been grown, I'll give you an example. The Gemara says in Kedushin, which we had earlier, if grain grows a third of its growth, a third of its growth, it's already classified as grain. That's grown minimally a third of its growth. So it's grown on the field, 99% of its growth. So it's grain on the field. So why, where do we, what is the basis to say, if I want to tie that grain that's still growing, where do we see, what is the basis to say that it's not valid? So what if it's growing? Where do we see growing is a problem? So Rashi offered a reason, Tosis, but evidently the reason is incorrect. Tosis is trying to look for a source. What is the source? What is the basis? That's Tosis' question. Because it's not processed. Because it's not processed. It's no different than, forget about the worker. What about the, the owner of No, but we just proved. We just proved. It, it's not, no, no, it's not only when he plucks it. He could even take it out of the basket. The, the farm worker, the, share, the farm worker, he could eat out of the basket. He's picking grapes. He could eat grapes out of the basket. It's not only off the tree. Out of the basket. He could eat. While he's working, he's harvesting the grapes, he could eat out of the basket. No, he can't eat to a point where he's sated from it. Right? That, that, that is what we call the fringe benefit, the Torah says, of every employee. Because even if the owner wouldn't have to have time, because it's not processed. There's a question of stealing. There it's not a question of eating something that's not tight. That's a financial right to eat. It's not, he's not stealing from the employer. So I'm asking, let's say a person has, has an orchard, and one of a kind of orchard, you produce the best wine, okay? Thousand dollars a bottle. That, that's what kind of grapes these are. And he w takes a friend of his, he's going to show him his orchard, his, 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 his vineyard. Goes into his vineyard, and he says, his friend says, can I taste one of the grapes? And there's an there to show, picks a grape, the owner picks a grape, and he gives a grape to his friend. Are they permitted to eat the grape? To taste the grape? Hasn't been tied. Yes or no? The answer is definitely. Why? Because it hasn't been processed. And it's, so it's not only the work, anything that has not been processed, the Torah says you're permitted to eat. Is there a difference between not being processed and not being grown? That's the question. In terms, wait, 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 wait. In terms of an obligation of Miser or Truma, no, there is no distinction. No, no. In terms of obligation of tithing, there is no difference. As you don't have to tithe to something that's growing, something that's been picked, if it's not processed, you have no obligation to tithe. Identically the same. That's Tosa's question. That's Tosa's question. That's what is the ba what is the basis for that? And if we understand that, then we'll understand why you can't tithe to something that's been cut and something which is still growing. Because something's growing, you have no obligation. Something which tithed, you can't affect. You can't affect it. E what? Yeah, but we see even something doesn't have gemar malach. If you should tithe it, it, it's an effect of tithing. But, but we, we need a basis. The Torah has to say somewhere, with to indicate or infer that if it's still growing, it has no relevance to the tithing process. No, that, because that's Dogon. Dogon is Gemar Malocha. No, no other source. And being cut where it hasn't been processed. That's okay, let, let's see Tosa's answer. Lechain, yeah, therefore Tosa says, 
Therefore, Tosis, as my understanding is, that if something is growing, it's absolved, and it's, it's ineffective, it's not tithable. The Dorsh Bishafri, it says you should take from it. Right? What, what is, the, what is the, the connotation taking from it? You take of the, gr- of the grain of the harvest from it. That means it's already been severed, cut from the ground. The Pasuk speaking something that's been detached. That Mimenu means, if it's not Mimenu, even if you've done the act of tithing, it's not, it's, it's, it's also, you're not permitted to do it because it's not effective. Mishum l'chathchilo also tebuk, mishum l'chathchilo also tebuk li mishum d'chsev de gondcho. The proper and correct context that you're supposed to tithe is after the grain or the protest has been fully processed. That's the right way to do it. Even if you should tithe it in the unprocessed state, it's also effective, but that's a b'dievet, that's not l'chathchilo. That's not the optimum way to do it. So that I would say maybe it's only chatchilo, right? Chatchilo, it should be dogon, it should be processed. So are you permitted to tithe from something's growing? It's not the right thing to do. But maybe post facto, if you did it, maybe it's effective. Why? Because it says mimenu. So it's all based mimenu. If you should take tithe it, take the ten percent when it's still in its sheaves, hide with the evid. Myri, that speaking, it's not the correct way to do it. The person did the wrong thing. The tolush v'kodimiruach. There it was cut, but it was before it was processed, before it was winnowed. So therefore, is it effective? It is effective. Did you do the right thing? The answer is no. You did the wrong thing. But if it's growing, not only are you doing the wrong thing, even if you should do it, it has no value. It has no effect whatsoever. Who said? If something, I'll listen to the question. If something is, grow, is is attached to the field, and it hasn't been cut, and you cut on, you, you you actually cut it on Shabbos, are you in violation of the law of kotzer? Yeah, you are. But it stopped growing. Right? It's attached. It's attached to its location of growth. It was ta- It says it was taken from it. Cut. Just severed. That's enough. Mimenu. Of course, when it speaks of tithing, it was t- what was taken from it, from it. So we speak what was taken. So the Torah is inferring that if it hasn't been taken yet, it's still growing. The, the whole process has no relevance to it. This is the laws of tithing. Tithing is only something that's been detached, that has been cut. That's the gontra, that's that's the chathilo. Right, correct, correct, correct. One from what one from the other, what what, what was the level? Wouldn't you say that Christians can be tied to something that is cut and unprocessed onto something that's processed? You can do it. You can do it. It's valid. It's valid. Tithing should be done on something which already is processed. Because Torah uses the term dagan. Dagan means processed grain. No, he, he, he's going on the, the mission of which the Gemara quotes. If you want to tithe from something that's been cut on something which is still growing, the mission says it's not valid. So Tosis is, now we have a source. That's it, that's all. Rashi cited a source, Tosis rejected it. So yesterday we were trying to answer Rashi, right? So when I tried to re- answer Rashi, which I don't know if it's, a, if it's a dochik or not, that Rashi we find that although the Gemara only mentions this principle in one location, the Gemara has a principle, Kol Roy Lebilei We discussed it yesterday. The Torah says a person brings a mincha. A mincha is comprised of <laughs> oil and flour. The Torah says you're supposed to mix it. Mixing is a mitzvah. 
So Reb Zera says that if you have the flour and the oil in a vessel, even if you don't mix it, it's a valid mincha. Why? Because as long as it, within the vessel there's sufficient room that when you mix it, the flour doesn't fall over the sides of the vessel, the vessel consecrates whatever's in that vessel, and it qualifies as a mincha to be, to be sacrificed. That's Reb Zera. Kol aroi labila in bila makemis. An application that we cited Rashi and Ksubis that the Torah says regarding testimony. Te testimony has to be oral testimony. Written testimony is not admissible in court. Rashi says that if the witnesses are alive and they recall the testimony, if they record the testimony and they send it to the court, that's admissible in court. Why? Because it's kol aroi labila in bila makemis. Since they could come in person and offer that oral testimony, so since it can be admitted orally, it can even be admitted through writing. But if they should forget the testimony, or they should die, where they can no longer offer the testimony orally, then the written testimony cannot be, it, it's not admissible any longer. It doesn't make a difference. It's when it's, a, it, it's a, it, the Torah says it's when they testify in court. It's not when you write it. The testimony that's brought to the court has to be oral. Oral testimony. So it's a rebel when they wrote it. So if when it's admitted in the court, they could testify orally, that testimony is equivalent of oral testimony. Because that's called a roi le bilay bil But if they should forget the testimony, what they should die, then that, that written testimony is not admissible in court. Okay? So we see Rashi has a principle, even though it says it specifically regarding the mixing of the mincha, but he applies this principle elsewhere. It's here also. Let's say you have grain, which you're ready, it's called, although it's not processed. But factually, it's within your ability to process it. So even like the mincha, you're supposed to mix it. If you don't mix it, you did the wrong thing. Is it a valid carbon? It's valid. Is it lechatchila? It's not lechatchila. It's not the optimum way to do it. Same thing. Torah says, what's the optimum type of tithing? Dogon. So what is that? As he says, processed, and you put it into your silo. That's fully processed grain. However, Sarah Rashi says, over here, Tolush, even though it's not processed, but it's within his ability to process it. Therefore, we identify it as Dogon. However, if it's growing on the field, that's not called a Roy Labilo. That's more than that. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. The Gemara says in, uh, in Gittin, a get, it says, the Kosa Vinosan. Right? You, you write the get and you give the get. Let's say a person writes a get on a leaf that's growing on a tree. He writes the get, and then he detaches the leaf and gives it to the woman. Ain't Mugreshes. She's not divorced. Why? Because Torah says there should be no interruption between the Vakosav and the Venosav. Because you need an act, you have to sever the leaf before you're able to give it to her. Or you, you, let's say you, you write it on a branch. You engrave it on the branch, then you cut the branch off, give it to the woman, and Mugreshes. Mar says, if you write a get on the hide of a cow, here, yeah. right? No, wait, or on the horn of a cow. And then you sever the horn and give it to the woman. Ain't it gracious. But let's see, you write it on the horn and you say, take the whole cow, right? She's, she's divorced. Because there's no interruption between the writing and the giving. He, he gave it a cow. Okay? That's what he said. Be busy with the cow. No, no, no. Is, it, it, no, it's not a time issue. Uh, no action. Has, if she'd be here, you're able to give the get from the time of the right without interruption to the woman. It's, it's within a context. It's, it's, it's receivable. It can be received. Nothing has to be done in the interim from the time of the writing till you actually... No, no. Because there it's the question. The person's not here. It's not, it has to do with the writing to the giving. The, can it be given? A mom, the moment the effort is written, it can. The woman has to be here. No, Rashi needs this. Because if it's within the ability to make it that, that's only Lechatechila. That's still called the Gondcha. Even if you don't process it, it still assumes that status of the Gondcha. With this principle, because you can't. But if it's growing, that's already it's too far removed. So because it's too far removed, then that's the reason why it's, that's why it's not called the Gantra. It has no relevance to the Gantra. No, 
No, no. That's a different pasuk. He's quoting a sifri. A sifri. This Tosa is not making this up. I, I don't know. I don't know what Rashi does with the sifri. I don't know. That's still, it's sufficient to be called the gontra. Now, it's, it's interesting. There's a halacha, the Pishri Truv and Hilchus Gitten. What? Tremendous argument. Tosis says, because Tosis himself doesn't apply that principle anywhere other than where it's stated in the Gemara. It has to, if it's the gontra, it has to be at that level. But we see it doesn't have to be at that level. Rashi says that it is at that level. Even if it's not because it, it could be converted, that's called at that level. Because Tos, Rashi applies that principle. It's not limited to, to the Mincha. He applies, we see, he applies it to other situations. But it's interesting, there's a, there's a question, Halacha. Mr. speaks about a case when a sofa writes a get, right? He represents the husband. Because the husband is the one who's supposed to write the get. So he points the sofa, the scribe as his agent, to write the get. Now, the Ramos says that with the sofa, he write, takes the parchment paper or the parchment, he should shave it, he should cut it to the size that the get is meant to be given, and then write the get. Not first write the get and then shave it. Let's say it's not exactly uh, uniform, the size or whatever it is. Or let's say it's part of another, a l larger piece of parchment. He should cut it first because it says, Vekosa Venosa. It's like cutting the horn off the cow. You right. can give everything, but is factually, it, it may be no good because you can differentiate over there. But it seemingly it's like cutting the, if you cut the horn off the cow, it's not valid. You give the whole cow, it is valid. So you see, if there's any degree of interruption between the writing and the giving, that immediately after writing, it's not in a position to be given, then it's not acceptable. That's, it's a problem. So it's good. On a Torah level, it's not a valid get. Like the cow. No, but it's, why is it different than the cow? Why is it different than the cow? If I give the whole cow with the horn, it's a valid get. But if I cut the horn off the cow, if I write it, it's not a valid get. Seemingly, they're, 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 they're the equivalent. I would say there is a You don't, have to, you don't have to cut the horn off either. You give the whole cow with the horn. No, but the tree. Forget about the tree. The tree, tree forget, okay, so let's talk about the cow and the horn. Right? Let's talk about the right, horn and the cow. You, you don't have to sever it. Just give the whole cow with the horn. It's a valid get. Because you choose, you want to retain the cow. Okay? So then it's the, seemingly the, 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 the equivalent. Right? So there it's also optional. You, you, it's your choice. You want to retain the cow. Okay. No, that's good. Okay. Because you see, it's not simple. Even Mincha is a Chiddush. It's a Chiddush Mincha. Torah says, Ubalal, you must mix it. So based on, 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 on certain things, which could be unique to Mincha, the Torah says, it, it, it passes just under the wire. Under the wire, it makes it. It makes the grade. Other things, Torah said, it has to be done as it, it must be done. Based on a pasuk. It's based on. But you can't argue. They're two pesukim. They're two pesukim. Pasuk. These are pesukim. The Gemara has a con contradiction. One pasuk seems to be that you have to take truma. The lady has to take truma twice, and the other pasuk says no. You only has to take one truma. So the Gemara says it depends. If it's been fully processed, the lady has to take truma twice. He has to take ten percent in addition to the truma that initially was not taken. Because prior to the tithing, it already, it already was obligated in the tithing of the truma. The other case, the other person says you take it only once, 
is speaking what was not processed. So even the first truma was there was no obligation to do anything. So when the masa was taken, this grain had no obligation to be tied for truma. Therefore, the levy only has to give one truma to the levy to the kohen and not the additional grain. If it's fully processed? Fully processed. Yeah. This is all psukim. Oh, all psukim. All psukim. It's a Torah violation. It's a Torah violation. <coughs> if he takes that out of water, it's a Torah violation. It's still valid. It's still valid. Yeah. Is that what it says in the art scroll, Mishnah's commentary? Okay, just want to know. Okay. If you come here at 5.15 in the morning, you'd be privy to that information. Okay. Okay, let's go further. Okay, just a few minutes. Now, boy, mine, Ravasim, Rav Yochan, interesting question. Oma peris arugzu tlushim. A person says... The row of produce of one row, which have already been cut, you truma al peris aruga zum chuborim, should be truma for the row of produce that's still attached, right? Or peris aruga zum chuborim, the fruit of one row, which are still growing, you truma al peris aruga zu tlushim, should be truma for the produce that already was cut, lichshigit lishu. You understand? He doesn't say it should be effective now, when they will be cut, when they will be harvested. So what is we're talking about? Davshul abalola. You want to affect something, do an action now. You're tithing now to affect something which now cannot be affected, but ultimately could be affected. Affected could be when it will be detached. And ultimately, they were detached. Wait a second. No, no, no. And they were. No, there's a difference. When the person is Harim Kadeshli in 30 days, he could marry her now. Right now, it cannot be tied now. Because right now, it's, it's growing. He wants to affect something, do an act to affect something which now cannot be affected. With the woman, I'm marrying you, doing an act of marriage, not to marry you in 30 days. It's, I, I've chosen that it should take effect in 30 days. But it, right now, you're available to be married now. She can't be married now. He chose to delay the effect 30 days. Here, its present state, it cannot be affected. Similar, except similar. Uh, similar that exact, but the Gemara is going to make a differentiation. Because here, it's within its power to detach it now. There, if she's a married woman, until her husband divorces her, she's not available to you. That's the difference. Here you have a certain degree, you have control. There you have no control. Therefore, there it's considered of Shlomo Olam, the Mishnah. Therefore, she's not married. I will marry you after your husband divorces you. That's of Shlomo Olam. You have no control over that. No, that, that's a circumstance. That, no, it's, you are in control. You mean you didn't you didn't get your, your delivery from uh, whatever it is from from, from being uh, your your forty below zero uh, what LL Bean you didn't get it so you can't go out with your with your, with your what Timberland boots we'll continue tomorrow.